Let's begin learning about beams and their equations. A beam in solid mechanics is a structure like this that can be applied uh, or exposed to forces, distributed forces like this, which we show with Q, or concentrated forces F or moments M. And it can be fixed at ends or different kinds of boundary conditions could be applied along the length of the beam. The euler bernoulli beam equations that we will study are based on one fundamental idea. And that is, if we have a neutral line at the center of the beam, that I've shown with this dashed green, which is always perpendicular to any cross section across the beam, I didn't draw a good line there, but um, the, the blue line is one of the cross sections, which is perpendicular to the neutral line of the beam. And as beam deforms in any way, such as this, that relationship remains unchanged. So basically, the cross sections along the beam will not change their, uh, will not change and will remain perpendicular to the neutral line of the beam with, with, uh, regardless of the deformation of the beam. And at each, two, at each end of the beam, we will have shear forces, I've shown with V, and moments, I've shown with M. There are four conventions that we take into consideration when we study beams. The first one is that the counterclockwise moments are positive. So if I take a look at the convention uh, for sh showing the deformation of a beam, I immediately see that M1 is clockwise going in that direction. So M1 is negative, however M2 is counterclockwise, which means M2 is positive. Similarly, all the rotations which are due to these moments are positive in counterclockwise direction. Next is that the forces in positive y direction are positive, so if this is my coordinate system, V1 is positive because in because it is in positive y direction, but v2 is negative. So I've shown in here. And finally, all the displacements are positive in the y direction or plus y direction. So if I had a d1 which, uh, due to this shear force v1, it would be positive, and d2 would be negative because v2 is also negative. In order to find the relationship between the forces and displacements, which is essential to find the um, stiffness matrix of a beam, we take a look at the, an infinitesimal beam element, such as this, at length dx. And let's see, let's say we have a point one and a point two there. We have a distributed load wx applied to this element, which will have its equivalent there, which would be equal to wx times dx is this force and at two ends we have shear forces and moments at end one we have v as a shear force and m as a moment and at end two we have v plus dv a little extra shear force for the shear forces and m plus dm which is the exact moment from here plus some extra moment now let's write the equi equilibrium equations for this infinitesimal element the first thing we write is the equil equilibrium for forces in the y direction. So we have V, which is positive, and then we have V plus dV, which is in a negative y direction, so we write it here. And then we have Wx times dx, which is again in the negative direction, which I write it there. These two terms will cancel out, and I will end up with this equation, dV plus wx dx is equal to zero, which again, I've taken out the, the negative signs. And if I rearrange this, I will end up with that equation, the relationship between the distributed force and the shear forces. Next, let's write the equilibrium of moments about point two, which is here. The first thing is this m from point one, which transfers to point two without any change. So I write it there, but again, it's in clockwise. So I write it as negative M. Then I have M plus DM at the same point, which is counterclockwise, so I write it as positive. Then this V 
times dx applies a moment about point 2 which would be clockwise so I write it in negative and then I will have the moment from this force wx times d times dx times this distance which is dx over 2 so it gives me this moment so these two will cancel out and I'll end up with dm minus v dx plus wx dx squared over 2 and that's because this dx multiplies by that dx now dx is, is a very small number and if you take it to the power of 2 it becomes even smaller so we can neglect this term and end up with this equation dm is equal to v dx or shear force is equal to the derivative of moment with respect to x which is the length along the uh, or distance along the length of the beam 